Good morning, church. Welcome back to the sanctuary. Thank you for joining us at home on the website. This is not normal, but it's what we're doing now. So we'll just get accustomed to it. Every time I hear Liberty Bell, I always feel like I need to begin by saying, welcome to Monty Pithen's Flying Circus. And uh, for those of you in the sanctuary, you will begin to see what we have been doing for the last three months, how this works. Uh, from time to time, your sight line may be obscured. That will be remedied once the new system is up and running. But uh, it is now that scene in The Wizard of Oz where you find out what the man behind the curtain has been doing. So uh, this is what we've been doing. Will you join me in the call to worship? From shore to shore, let God's name be praised. From mountains high to valleys low, let the echo of praise resound. From the mouths of children and the prayers of saints, let thanksgiving abound. For great is our God and greatly to be praised. Because we cannot sing together, we have developed some new ideas about how we might incorporate music. So um, I put the video together and Rob is now going to improvise the soundtrack. So uh, here we go. You know this tune and the words for the beauty of the earth.
Now, as we continue in our worship and continue to gather as God's people, in that gathering we become aware of our need to confess our sin and admit our faults and failures. So together, let us pray for God's forgiveness. God of every nation, we confess that we have rejected your sovereignty. We have claimed freedom for all people, yet have ignored your call for justice. We have boasted of our successes while leaving too many of your children behind. We have exalted in our power while failing to use that power for the common good. We have ignored the plight of the poor, condoned discrimination, and devalued sisters and brothers created in your image. Forgive our ignorance and pride. Remove from us our blindness to our privilege. Renew in us a desire to see your blessings made present in every life. Empower us to renew our lives and the life of our nation. God's love is the most powerful force in the universe. It creates, it forgives, it restores, it empowers. In Jesus Christ, God's love became visible and tangible and lived among us to teach us a better way. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Good morning. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Just a couple of reminders about things in the bulletin. This week, we'll continue with the web services during the week at 5.30 Central Time. We will join together on Wednesday on the Facebook page for evening prayer. Rob will be performing music on Thursday at noon Central Time, so tune in for that midday concert. And then we will be back together again in person and online next week as we continue with our worship. Um, there are many thanks to be shared for being able to be in this space today. Uh, Sandy Mance has been in here just scrubbing the daylights out of stuff. And uh, I have not seen this sanctuary this clean in 20 years. Uh, so we are grateful for all of the buildup of orange glow that is glowing no more and uh, for safe places to sit. Laura and Sandy and others have been busy creating the pew ropes so that we could mark things off and give you some social distance and we hope that that provides an extra layer of comfort and assurance for you to gather. Uh, Paul Blaylock has constructed the frame for an old screen that we had down in the basement and that makes this possible to to use some visual things in worship so lots of people have been doing lots of things and we are very appreciative of all of their efforts now as our worship takes us into hearing the good news of new life let us pray that god will lead us into understanding speak to us once more O god across the miles and across the ages let this ancient word come to new life in us, and may we be found faithful disciples and recipients of that name above all names, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our lesson for the day continues our readings from the book of Proverbs. Today we're in the 14th chapter, reading verses 27 through 34. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life so that one may avoid the snares of death. The glory of a king is a multitude of people. Without people, a prince is ruined. Whoever is slow to anger has great understanding, but one who has a hasty temper exalts folly. A tranquil mind gives life to the flesh, but passion makes the bones rot. Those who oppress the poor insult their maker. For those who are kind to the needy, honor him. The wicked are overthrown by their evil doing, but the righteous find a refuge in their integrity. Wisdom is at home in the mind of one who has understanding, but it is not known in the heart of fools. Righteousness exalts a nation, 
but sin is a reproach to many people. Glory be to God who gives us the word. May God write that word on our hearts, and may God and God alone receive glory, honor, and praise. Rob is going to play a few of the variations on the national anthem by Dudley Buck, and as he does, I have a piece of art for you to look at there in the bulletin. This is John Trumbull's painting of the presentation of the Declaration of Independence. Originally done as a small painting, it has been enlarged at the request of Congress and installed as a mural in the rotunda of the Capitol, where it's been for many, many years. So, as you listen to the music and you look at the painting, there are two questions that I'd like you to consider. What do you see in the painting? And what is absent from the painting?
We use a lot of code words around the church world. When our family moved out to our little farm in June of 1968, we visited the Valencia United Presbyterian Church, which became our home church. On our first visit in the summer of 1968, I opened the bulletin and there was an announcement that read, the LSD class will meet in the lounge next Sunday. In the summer of 1968, I thought we had found a rather progressive congregation with a superb outreach strategy for young people. We later found out that the LSD class was church speak for the Laura S. Dixon Bible study, which was populated by the matriarchs of the congregation. Code words. We don't just find them in church bulletins. Sometimes we come across them in the pages of scripture. Righteousness is something of a code word. Righteousness is how we translate the Hebrew word tzedek. Righteousness means more than being a good person. Righteous people and righteousness are grounded in an understanding of and a connection with a righteous God. Righteousness is a reflection of God's way, God's values, God's moralities. Righteousness is the canvas upon which God painted the universe and all that it holds. When God's people are righteous, we are living in God's way and doing what God calls us to do. When we are living in righteousness, we are bringing God's will and way into the fullness of our lives. When righteousness is being practiced, justice, fairness, equality, and integrity are on full display. So the words of Proverbs seem full of patriotic pride when we read, righteousness exalts a nation. Justice, fairness, equality, and integrity exalt a nation. We love that. We inscribe such thoughts on our national monuments. We paraphrase the words and incorporate them into political oratory and campaign speeches. Still, those words can cut us to the quick. Justice, fairness, equality, and integrity are observable and measurable things. We know when they exist, and we sometimes know when they do not exist. We know when they are the possession of all, and we sometimes know when they are denied to some. We know when we are treated fairly, and we sometimes know when some are treated unfairly. We try to gloss over those moments and events when we fail to be righteous. We rewrite history and offer such slanted views of history that the truth is obscured and prevents us from feeling the guilt we rightly bear. We romanticize a version of history, events, and practices that never really existed but which offers us comfort and pardon in our complicity. We rationalize history, reassuring ourselves that we weren't a part of that and neither were our ancestors, that it was all the result of them, whoever them was that week, that day, that hour. At this time of year, I am always drawn to the phenomenal poem by Langston Hughes, Let America Be America Again. As an African-American writer, Hughes brought his experience as an oppressed minority in the early years of the last century into each line. 
But he did not limit his words to just the plight of black Americans. He spoke for the poor, the forgotten, the overworked and underpaid, the immigrant, and those who were not experiencing for themselves the promised prosperity enjoyed by an elite few. In part, the poem reads, I am the poor white, fooled and pushed apart. I am the Negro, bearing slavery scars. I am the red man, driven from the land. I am the immigrant, clutching the hope I seek and finding only the same old stupid plan of dog eat dog, of mighty crush the weak. I am the young man, full of strength and hope, tangled in the ancient endless chain of profit, power, gain, of grab the land, of grab the gold, of grab the ways of satisfying need, of work the men, of take the pay, of coming and owning everything for one's own greed. I am the farmer, bondsman to the soil. I am the worker, sold to the machine. I am the Negro, servant to you all. I am the people, hungry, humble, mean. Hungry yet today despite the dream, beaten yet today. O oh, pioneers, I am the man who never got ahead, the poorest worker bartered through the years. Yet I am the one who dreamt our basic dream, in the old world while still a serf of kings, who dreamt a dream so strong, so brave, so true, that even yet its mighty daring sings in every brick and stone, in every furrow turned, that's made America the land it has become. Oh, I'm the man who sailed those early seas in search of what I meant to be my home. For I am the one who left dark Ireland's shore and Poland's plain and England's grassy lay. And torn from black Africa's strand, I came to build a homeland for the free. If America is to be America again, we must find a new righteousness. We must discover or rediscover a new moral core for our nation, a new sense of right and wrong that is grounded in truth, a new commitment to liberty and justice for all. That is what will exalt our nation, not empty slogans, not promoting falsehood as truth, not by demeaning other peoples and nations in an attempt to make ourselves look better by comparison. A reclaiming of the way of God, the way of justice, truth, and compassion of what Lincoln, who really did worship in a Presbyterian church, referred to as the better angels of our nature. When we live into the pattern in which God has created us, when we embrace the way of God, when we reflect the love of God in word and action, God is experienced and the nation is exalted. There is an old Chinese saying that reminds us, if there is righteousness in the heart, there will be beauty in the character. If there is beauty in the character, there will be harmony in the home. If there is harmony in the home, there will be order in the nation. If there is order in the nation, there will be peace in the world. That means, my sisters and brothers, that if the nation is to be righteous, we must drain the poison of hatred and division from our hearts. That's where it begins. If righteousness is to be seen in the nation, we must pursue justice for all, freedom for all, and opportunity for all. If righteousness is to be known in the nation, we must apologize to the indigenous people who have 
been robbed and continue to be robbed of their land, who have been and continue to be treated as less than human beings, and we must make amends. If righteousness is to be known in the nation, we must apologize to the descendants of slaves who have been treated as three-fifths of a human being for far too long, and we must lift them out of the indignity with which we have enshackled them for 400 years on this continent. If righteousness is to be known in the nation, we must learn the age-old lesson that we must not look for our own advantage, but look out for the betterment of the other. This is not political. It is Christian and Muslim and Jewish and Hindu and every other religion and philosophy that teaches the lesson and practice of love. It is the very heart of that ancient commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Wisdom, truth, insight, justice, righteousness, for now and evermore. Amen. As God's people, let us affirm our faith using words taken from a brief statement of faith, one of the confessional documents of the Presbyterian Church USA. We trust in Jesus Christ, fully human, fully God. Jesus proclaimed the reign of God, preaching good news to the poor and release to the captives, teaching by word and deed and blessing the children, healing the sick and binding up the brokenhearted, eating with outcasts, forgiving sinners, and calling all to repent and believe the gospel. Unjustly condemned for blasphemy and sedition, Jesus was crucified, suffering the depths of human pain and giving his life for the sins of the world. God raised this Jesus from the dead, vindicating his sinless life, breaking the power of sin and evil, delivering us from death to life eternal. As we come to our time for prayer, I invite those of you who are watching online to submit your prayer requests through the comment box on the Facebook page. And I invite you gathered here in the sanctuary to share prayers of thanksgiving or prayers of concern that you would like to have included. We've also been asked to pray for wisdom for our leaders, patience for all people, healing for those with COVID, cancer, and illnesses of all kinds, for a friend's mother who has pancreatic and liver cancer, for gratitude for a week with four generations of family, for peace for Macy, for healthcare workers, the church staff, being back in the sanctuary, and I would ask you to also continue to be in prayer and support to Linda Arp, uh, 
Larry died last Monday, and uh, this was the first time in 22 and a half years that I came to church. And after doing the running around that I typically do on a Sunday morning, and then I go and sit down at about a quarter of eight, Larry wasn't there to talk about yesterday's golf tournament or football game or baseball game or any of the other problems of the world, which Larry and I solved on a weekly basis between 8.45 and 8.15. So peace and all the goodness for Linda and gratitude to God for Larry's amazing service to our congregation and community. Let's go to God in prayer. Almighty God, you have given us this good land as our heritage. Make us always remember your generosity and constantly do your will. Bless our land with honest industry, sound learning, and an honorable way of life. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil way. Make us who come from many nations with many different languages a united people. Defend our liberties and give those whom we have entrusted with the authority of government the spirit of wisdom, that there might be justice, righteousness, and peace in our land. When times are prosperous, let our hearts be thankful, and in troubled times do not let our trust in you fail. We are grateful today, O oh God, for the opportunity to begin regathering here in the sanctuary to be a part of your people at worship. We are grateful for a week with one family enjoying four generations together. We are grateful for the church staff and for all those who have labored long and hard hours to make it possible for us to be together again. We pray for healing, healing for every form of brokenness and especially those who are battling COVID, cancer, and illnesses of every kind. We pray for a friend's mother who has pancreatic and liver cancer. We pray for peace for Macy. We pray for strength for healthcare workers, nurses, doctors, technicians, all those who offer treatment and care. We pray for researchers who are looking for more effective treatments for COVID and for even a vaccine. We pray for those who mourn, especially for Linda and all the friends and family of Larry Arp. Give them peace as they mourn his passing. And we remember before you today those of our number whose transition from this life into the next we will mark this week. LaVon Stone, Bob Stallings, Shirley Winicky, and John Meeks. As they blessed us in this life May their memories continue to bless us and inspire us. Finally, O oh God, we pray for ourselves. Hear the prayers we offer from the silence of our hearts. These and all our prayers we offer in the name of Jesus, who still teaches his disciples to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now as we close our worship, I invite you to read the words to yourself to this hymn that we sing usually on this Sunday nearest the 4th of July. The tune is called National Hymn. 
Rob is going to play it for you, and I invite you to consider the words. Righteousness exalts a nation. So go and live as reflections of God's righteousness. Be people of peace, of justice, of equity, of fairness. Be people who inspire others to explore who God is and the possibility of serving God. Go, be disciples. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship and companionship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. You'll be dismissed by Rose following the postlude.